Welcome everyone, welcome! Justin M. Bailey not here, instead speaking to you is none other than the script advisor and assistant to this fine channel, T3. Never heard of me? Well, I've never heard of anyone that reads the credits. Justin honestly has some physical problems that sometimes prevents him from making content as much as he would like to, so I wanted to step up to the plate and help produce more content for you while he is recovering. John Carpenter, the creator of a movie that both Justin and I love, The Thing. Justin and I first saw this movie together, I think around the summer of 2003 or so. We had both picked it up from our local blockbuster video together because it looked incredibly stupid. Why would we want to watch it if we thought it was incredibly stupid? You see, Justin and I have always been huge Mystery Science Theater 3000 fans, and back in the day, we always used to love renting and watching stupid old sci-fi horror films so that we could get drunk and heckle somebody else's failures, just like the cast of MST3, and have ourselves a good old time. And we thought that's exactly what John Carpenter's The Thing would be, too. I mean, have you seen his other movies? <laughs> and at first, it certainly started out that way. Cute bitch. Let my people go, Todd Ramsey's! Snackies for puppy! Snackies for puppy! Stupid window! Had it coming for years! Oh, hey, let's shoot someone! Get a hold of somebody. Get a hold of anybody. We gotta report this mess. Look! Wait. Diabetes. Holy shit! Diabetes. It was going to be a fun night indeed, and then this happened. <laughs> All the jokes stopped. Everything stopped. Maybe even our pulses after Justin and I saw the dog kennel. And after that, we didn't have anything to laugh at anymore. After that, for the next hour and a half, Justin and I, we didn't say a damn thing. We shut the hell up and sat there in pure silence, practically frozen, as we watched ourselves the horror masterpiece that is John Carpenter's The Thing. <laughs> The Thane is John Carpenter's magnus opus. Whether he wanted it that way or not, and there is no way in hell you will ever see Crow and Tom Servo making fun of this one, because it really is one of the greatest sci-fi horrors of all time. And in some ways, it's even better than Ridley Scott's Alien. Blasphemy of blasphemies, even out of my mouth, I know. Especially because Alien is one of the most significant movie experiences of my life. But hear me out. Better yet, hear Justin out. These next words are his, and when I heard them, I began to look very differently at my beloved H.R. Geiger terror. Because when you really think about it, when it really is broken down, as iconic as the xenomorph from Alien is, end of the day, it's just a guy in a zipper suit. It's just a guy in a zipper suit. Same as with all those campy horror classics from the 50s and 60s, whereas the creature from The Thing is anything but a guy in a suit. The Thing is a thousand different beasts from a thousand different solar systems. And this is most certainly how it's presented in the film. They used every trick in the book to pull this off. It's never a guy in a suit. This alone is why The Thane is a must-see for all horror fans, all movie makeup fans, because what they achieved without CG, no movie will ever repeat. CG might be beautiful and easy, but I promise you, you won't believe what you are seeing in The Thane. But it's not the makeup that makes this film a masterpiece. What is really and truly most frightening about the actual concept of the creature, which is in essence, it is an alien in a person suit. The alien is hiding in a person suit. The thing is not just some xenomorph that when you see it, you either know to A, shoot it, B, pray to heaven, or C, run like hell. 
The thing is an imitator, it's a mimicker of a thousand forms, and it always chooses to hide in plain sight, right in front of you until it gets you alone, and probably in the skin of one of your closest friends. You will never know until it is too late. So how do we know who's human? If I was an imitation, a perfect imitation, how would you know if it was really me? How would you know? I mean, who can you trust in that movie, right? Who was friend and who was foe in John Carpenter's The Thane? But even worse, and maybe even most frightening of all, maybe even more frightening than any of the images, this flick succeeds in burning into our retinas is who can we even trust in our own lives today as well? Who is really friend and who is really foe? Who really means to help us and who really means to hurt us? Who is not who they seem? Who is some thing else? Yes, they did the scenario with Bilbo Baggins, but Bilbo won't be infecting his hostile, crazy plans into your most trusted co-workers and most beloved friends and family as effectively as this. <laughs> This is the question of the thing, and may very well also be the question of the age of our everyday lives, everyone. It's really tough to tell these days who to trust, whether we are dealing with friends or family, a used car salesman, a stockbroker, people on the internet, a next door neighbor? A next door neighbor who on the surface may in fact seem to be completely reputable, likable, and upstanding but who in reality is in fact a drug dealing gangster, a pedophile, a serial killer, or even a sleeper cell terrorist agent, you name it. Can you ever truly know someone when in fact behind closed doors, they are completely alien to us? And what makes it all the more tough is Lord knows we all need to trust somebody. Lord knows the only way humans ever get by is by trusting each other and working together. If there is no more trust, we're all doomed. We will not survive because all of us, all of humanity, it is just like the crew of Outpost 31. We're really all we've got and all we really have to sustain ourselves and keep us alive is this teeny tiny little outpost in the middle of a never-ending ocean of frozen death in every single direction. Space, the final frontier? More like space, frozen death in every direction. Just what are the odds do you think that humanity will ever survive anywhere else but this planet? Probably 0 0.0000000000001. Just go ask the scientist down the street. Don't you want a balloon? That's, that, that's a, not a scientist. That's a planet devouring clown. Stay away from him. But for all intents and purposes, this is it, everyone. This is all we've got. There's nowhere to go. There is no escape pod. This is Ripley, last survivor of the Nostromo, signing off. Yeah, fuck you two! <laughs> fuck you too, Ripley. Fuck you too, Ripley Scott. Fuck you, Alien, because Alien is lying to you. For the most part, there is no escape pod to all of our big problems. Abandoning the outpost, abandoning the ship is hardly ever an option. Just like in the movie The Thing, maybe we're all doomed. Maybe each and every one of us is doomed from the start. Maybe we are all meant to go down Seriously, it's not like anyone gets out of the game of life alive now, is it? But, also just like in John Carpenter's The Thing, and to also paraphrase the philosopher Walter Kaufman, we can choose to go down nobly. We can choose to go out with dignity, with a bane. Yeah, fuck you too. Fuck you too indeed. This line screams John Carpenter's style, as well as the 80s love of one-liners. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubbles. Oh, shit. But honestly, 
This is the one that really should be posted on each and every one of our refrigerators. It should be put on t-shirts and bumper stickers and should be taught to every single first grader because that's it right there. That's the answer to just about everything to our everyday lives and the challenges we often face. What's that you say? Humans will never fly? Yeah, fuck you too. That girl will never go out with me? Yeah, fuck you too. NASA will never go to Mars? Victory is impossible? We're all doomed? Yeah, fuck you too. I'm still gonna try. Humans have not buckled yet to impossible odds and it is why we are still here. When humans stop trying and trusting and working together, then we are truly doomed. So fuck you too. Fuck you too. And hey, you honestly never know, but maybe this idea, this mentality, maybe in, in the end, this is our saving grace. Maybe this is our only chance at an escape pod, so to speak. Maybe this fuck you too attitude is why we're still here. It's what really makes us humans the most instead of some other thing. And maybe this is what has always made the impossible possible. And hey, you never know, one day, maybe humanity will stretch out to the stars. Maybe there is hope, or maybe there's not. But either way, this is T3 of Outpost JMB signing off. And yeah, fuck you too. Go away, scary monster, go away. Go away. Go away, scary monster, go away. Go away. Go away, scary monster, go away. Scary monster, go away. Scary monster, go away. Go away.